Ooh, what's up, Internet? It's the nightly morning show. My name's Nerdy, and I'm Clarus. We get nerdy nightly, and I thought we, we thought we'd share it with you. That was a whole dang mess. What happened? I, I don't know. I, I, you chose I, you chose the intro as your moment to like move every part of your body. Well, because I have to like sit up because otherwise I just look way shorter than you. <laughs> and and I, I just was like late on it. And then a chat caught my eye in the middle of the intro and I just, I, <laughs> it was a mess. And I apologize formally and profusely. Good morning, everyone. That is right. Welcome back to another edition of the nightly morning show. I think we're at 103. Yeah, 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 yeah. that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Uh, this is a big one because it is Snyder Cut Week. It is also the week that is the premiere of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, that's this week. Yeah. Oh god. That's this Friday. I thought there was one more um, week. No, no, there's there's a lot going on. The, the, it's, it's nerdy times in the world at the moment. I love it. Yeah. I, love, I love me some nerdy times. But before we get into the news, I wanted to ask, how are you doing? Um, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Um, uh, I'm excited to shoot the cosplay later today. Mm -hmm. I'm sad I'm not streaming. I, I usually stream on Mondays, um, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be streaming tomorrow instead. Um, but, uh, yeah, just kind of been like focusing on, on that because we've, uh, we, we rented a studio, like a photo studio. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's going to be all perfect. It's going to be great. I'm really excited. The Tris Marigold cosplay, uh, made by our friend Tino Stark for you. It mm -hmm. looks great. Looks awesome. We're going to be putting out the <clears throat> unboxing video, um, t tonight? Later today, I think? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we'll put that out later today. Yeah, so that'll be public today, so you can see the cosplay. And mm -hmm. then, um, if you are a member of our Patreon, you'll get to see those full photo sets, uh, probably later this week. Yes. Um, once we get those week. photos edited and up. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm really stoked. That is patreon.com slash nerdy nightly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not a member of our Patreon, we have tiers as low as a dollar. Yeah. It is a great way to support the channel, support the nerdy nightly. And um, I, we just want to say thank you to our patrons because we yeah. couldn't do this without you. It's a little plug right at the beginning, but mm -hmm. uh, our patrons make everything possible. Truly. They make our dreams come true. And literally, um, they're all really attractive people. Yes. Yeah. On the inside and the outside. Yeah. Oh yeah. Double attractive. Double. They got the. They got those double A's. Double. Those double attractions. <laughs> all right. Sure. Is double A like a really small bra size? Uh, that's like. If you're or is prepubescent. It... Oh, okay, okay. Like, I don't actually know anyone in real life who is a tr double A as, like, an adult. But I didn't make that up. Like, they, that bra size exists. Mm-hmm. But it's basically like a bathing suit. Or like a training bra? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's also a battery type. Women's clothing sizes are baffling. They don't make any sense. No, they Thank don't. Thank you, fashion industry. There's a guy on TikTok who's doing a really great series making fun of it, of like where the yes. fashion industry. Yes. Oh, it's um, so funny. He's. Oh, I wish I knew his name off the top of my head, but he's so he's funny. Hilarious. Goodbye. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. He does a really good job. Um. Yeah, I'm excited for this week. I'm excited. I think this is going to be a cool, fun week. We have a new uh, Twitch series uh, that we're going to do on Twitch. Uh, we're going to be playing Hades this Friday at yes. noon. Uh, but, uh, the, the, Together. the thing is, we both get half of the controller. Yeah. 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 We're we going to take two Joy-Cons. One Joy-Con. And we're going to try and beat Hades. We're going to start with a fresh file so that we don't have the bonuses of our, like, mirrors and stuff. Uh, and we're going to try and beat Hades, each holding half of a controller. Yeah. Hades is going to be tough because you and I, like, just play it differently. And we have preferences for different weapons mm -hmm. and different styles of attacking. So this is going to be a hot mess. Yeah. Um, uh, Dark Dispatch wants to know if you'll do a Wanda Scarlet Witch cosplay. Um, I would love to. Mm -hmm. um, I've been talking to Tino about it. Um, I don't have the extra funds at the moment. No. And we have to get through tax season. Yep. Um, but it's something I definitely want to do. For sure. Uh, don't tell me gaming just posted from Google. There's no definitive answer as to why double A cup is smaller than an A, but the double letter cups that follow D, for example, D, D, E, E, F, F, are all larger than the original size. Yeah. It's made particularly confusing as there are no in international standards for bra sizing. No, it makes zero sense. Right. 
Yeah. Love it. I, lo- I love that for us. Being a woman is just great. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite conversation to have with a woman is when they're like, yeah, I'm either... And you're like, wait, what? I'm either like a size four or like a size 26 or <laughs> a size three. And you're like, At Victoria's wait. Secret, I'm a D cup. But then at La Senza, I'm a C cup. But then at Walmart, I'm a B cup. And you're like, what is happening? Well, it's because they don't actually carry... St- like, th- fun fact, my bra size is not carried basically anywhere. Mm-hmm. If I want a bra that actually fits me properly, I have to... Get it, like, custom-made or go to, like, a specialty shop. Mm-hmm. And it's really freaking annoying. Because you go into Licenza and, and they're like, oh, no, 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 this is, like, your sister size. And I'm like, I'm sorry. No, it's not. <laughs> it may not. as well be your sister's size at that yeah, point. Yeah, literally. I'm like, then give it to my non-existent sister. Like, it's, ugh. The sister's sister Bra size. Bra sizing <laughs> is so dumb. I would, I would, if I had an employee that said that term aloud in a store that I was running, I would fire them. No, that's what they call them. In the bra industry. Yeah, no, I would I would fire that person. You, yeah. uh, that person would lose their job. It's so silly. Like For saying something that... Yeah. Clearly nope, nonsensical. That is, that is how they market it. Like, if, like a sister size to like a 34C is um, a 32B. But that's not true because the band and the cup size are different things. So it won't fit you the same. I'm you ba- you're basically screwed. Yeah. This is a nerdy news show. It is. It is. We're talking about bras. Why not? <laughs> but let's get into the nerd news. Because this was a huge, fascinating weekend at the box office. Yes. Which means we get to go, y'all, check it out. We, we the, the nightly morning show now with graphics. Professional. The James Cameron film Avatar. Not Avatar The Last Airbender. The blue Avatar alien the blue, yeah. um, war movie. War movie. <laughs> Yeah, Blue Alien war movie. That's good. The, the Blue Alien environmentally focused war movie um, about the mining of unobtainium. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it was called, right? Something unobtainium? Like yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, has reclaimed its spot on top of the box office this weekend after a re-release in China. Really? Um, yeah. So Avengers Endgame, if you if you were if you were following that saga back in the day, Avengers mm-hmm. Endgame very very slowly overtook Avatar. It took like literally months because it got to the point where they were like within a few million of each other, and then Avengers was just like chipping away, and it got to the point where Avengers Endgame very narrowly passed Avatar by about seven point uh, eight million dollars. Okay. Uh, depending on what source you use for international numbers, uh, different places have slightly different numbers. But it was generally agreed upon that Avengers Endgame had just narrowly passed uh, Avatar and was the number one box office film worldwide. That was until this past weekend uh, when they did a re-release of Avatar in China and it did um, a lot of money. It did a lot of money. Here, here's what's wild. Um, Avatar, this past weekend in China, mm-hmm. had a higher box office return than, or had a similar box office return as Raya, The Last Dragon, did the pre- last weekend, and Tom and Jerry's opening weekend, the weekend before, combined. Uh, Avatar had a $21 million re-release weekend this weekend in China. What? Yes. Which put it, um, another, like, Fourteen million dollars ahead of Avatar again. Ah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, most most Hollywood most Hollywood studios would be thrilled, like literally over the moon thrilled to have a twenty one million dollar opening weekend in China. A lot yeah. of movies don't have an opening weekend their first time that high in China, yeah. but this re release did twenty one million dollars in China, which is absolutely unbelievable um and That's... so yeah and so wow. a- 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 avatar has now passed 2.8 billion dollars okay making it um just a, just a little bit a little bit ahead of uh, avengers endgame wow which means that I'm at shocked. some point this year avengers endgame will re-release somewhere and it'll become number one and we're going to be playing this game until something blows both of them out of the water yeah that's true that's true they're going to keep vying for that spot i mm-hmm. think for yeah Oh, it'll keep happening. Avengers Endgame will get re-releases. You know, it, 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 it this, this, this happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what's very fun about this is that uh, the Avengers congratulated Avatar for passing them. The same way that Avatar congratulated the Avengers for passing uh, them uh, last year. 
or two years ago now. Oh my god, Endgame was two years ago now. Um, but uh, it doesn't matter because it's Disney beating Disney. Beating Disney, beating Disney, beating yeah. Disney, beating Disney. It's basically irrelevant. <laughs> it's Disney. The, the the public social media posts of like the Avengers congratulating Avatar is literally Disney's marketing team Thanking congratulating itself. Disney's marketing team. Like, hey, Disney. Good job, Disney. Yeah. <laughs> they're, literally, they're literally just patting themselves on the it's back. It's like that Spider-Man meme where he's like yeah, standing there like pointing at himself. <laughs> Literally, it's like, hey, good job. <laughs> that's so funny because it's so true. Yeah, that's, that's basically all it is. Yeah, now that Disney yeah. owns Avatar, they have the number one and two worldwide boxes. They also have the number one domestic box office record with um, Star Wars The Force Awakens, which right. is um, the highest grossing uh, right. domestic film of all time. But yeah, um, yeah that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the big box office news. But we also have some domestic box office numbers to look at. Um, Raya the Last Dragon managed to come in at number one again this weekend. Nice. Uh, coming in with $5.5 million. The nice thing here is they only dropped 35% this uh, weekend to weekend from their opening. Okay. Uh, which is a pretty decent drop. Um, yeah, it's uh, not bad. Yeah, this is also helped by the fact that New York has opened theaters. Mm -hmm. um, and Los Angeles will be opening theaters today. Um, oh, wow. So uh, theaters okay. in Los Angeles today are open. And... Um, so, you know, Ryan Last Dragon might make some more money. They might hold on. They might have a longer haul. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Dagon, uh, Broken Pirates in the chat wants to know if uh, actors get percentages. Yes. So, it depends. Uh, on, a, on a movie re-release within the SAG contract, um, they would continue to get royalties. At this point, the royalties would be very small on something like Avatar. Mm -hmm. um, it's just not making enough money. Um, but, uh, yes, the, they, they would but, continue to get uh, royalties for every re release of the film. But not all Hollywood contracts have royalties, right? All movie contracts do. All movie contracts. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, not okay. all tele... Not all streaming movies would. Yeah. Like, a Netflix movie would maybe not have any royalties attached. That would depend on Got the it. individual actor's contracts. Um, I actually don't know of any actor who's managed to negotiate royalties on, like, a Netflix show or on a Disney Plus show. Yeah. Um, but any traditional movie theater uh, released film will have royalties if it's under a SAG contract. Gotcha. Uh, which the okay. majority of them are. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. It's rare for a it's rare for a non union film to make that much money. Mm -hmm. um, it's very it's it's very very rare for a non union film to make any money. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm happy yeah. that I'm happy that Raya's done well. It's just it is unfortunate to see such low numbers for like new movies. Yeah, but I mean everything can only have a certain number of people in the theater, right? Other than Texas, obviously in Texas they can have their their full. Um, capacity uh, in the cities that are going with the, the state's mandate. Certain cities um, uh, like Galveston are still not um, yeah. allowing full openings. But yeah, because um, what's interesting is uh, Tom and Jerry, um, the mm -hmm. classic characters brought back to the big screen. Mm -hmm. They they dropped thirty seven percent to uh, four point one million. Yeah, um, that movie has twenty eight point two million dollars gross domestically so far. So Tom and Jerry's actually making some money. It's actually not bad. Yeah, obviously helped by the fact that it is a known IP. People yeah. love those characters. People are familiar with those characters. Mm -hmm. um, Chaos Walking is in number three with two point two five million dollars. That's a forty percent drop, which isn't great right now. Yeah, um, that film starring uh, Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley. Yeah has apparently over a hundred million dollar budget uh and it's only grossed 6.9 million dollars so far so that is a huge loss oh, for the studio boy. um they're going to take a hit on that for sure um chaos walking was actually optioned over 10 years ago um really yeah it was uh, chaos walking is like a ya uh, book series oh uh, gotcha. and so lionsgate bought the rights to it when the big YA boom was happening, when we were getting our Twilights, our yeah. Legions, our Divergence, our, those are the same series. Um, our Maze Runner, there's another big one that I missed. Hunger Games. Hunger Games, that's yeah. it. Um, and it just took them so long to put it out, and honestly, the YA stuff is kind of dead Yeah, now. which sucks, because honestly, it's, it <clears> seems <throat> like a really interesting concept, and I, you know, I Tom Holland is great, and mm -hmm. I, I, I want to see it. It's just, yeah, it's tragic that it's really not doing well. Well. It's not really on anyone's radar. Um, I want to watch it because we like yeah. that trailer. Yeah, but, we did. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know when we'll get a chance to. Yeah. Um, and uh, number four is Boogie. I don't actually know what that movie is, but it's Me from either. Focus Features. Made another $730,000. And in fifth place, still this in the is, top five. This is what y'all were waiting for. Still in the top five. It's the hero of the hour. Crude's a new age. Crude's two, baby. 
dropped another 34 uh, percent and is sitting at five hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the weekend mm. it's 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 total gross is fifty four point three uh, thousand dollars so bad. it only needs a little over two million dollars or sorry a little over three uh, it needs a little over three million dollars to pass tenant. I believe in it. I um, believe in the crudes, y'all. I so the crudes, it, the crudes too could make this happen if it can. If if it cannot fall off, here's the thing with Raya and with um, Tom and Jerry above it in the box office. Newer kids films, I expected crudes to be completely wiped out. Yeah. The fact that it's holding on at Third all, fifth. um, the fact that it's having the same size drop. As uh, Raya, it's actually had a better drop than Raya's 35% and Tom and Jerry's 37.9% mm -hmm. at 34%. So the, the crudes can do this, y'all. We just need it to stay six more weeks. No, it's not going to happen. We'll see. It would have to not drop it all over the next six weeks. It might happen. I don't know. Godzilla King of the Monsters. Godzilla versus King Kong is going to come in and change everything. True, but I don't think that's the same audience. Um... I don't know. That's the kind of movie that I can see parents bringing their kids to. It's King Kong. It's Godzilla. Okay. Yeah. You know, like... Yeah, I don't know. yeah. Okay. Well, but, we'll see. Guys, we're, we, we're, we, we're holding out hope for Cruise. We're holding out hope for Cruise in New Age. I just wanted to pass Tenet. I don't know why. I haven't seen it. I don't know if it's good. But I just wanted to pass Tenet because I've talked about it every Monday for what, like, two months? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's gonna get there. That's all the box office news. Okay. What, how do you feel about Avatar and Avengers re-releasing to get new records? It's so weird. Like, it's, it is odd, right? I mean, like, I... Sure, I guess, like, there's barely any content being released. Like, there's not a lot of new stuff, so... There is in China, though. Like, China's had some, like, really huge... Um, China China's had some really huge releases in the last few weeks with um, mm -hmm. Hi Mom... Um, and their end game, and uh, what was that other one? Detective Chinatown 3. Like, right, they've had huge right. $100 million movies. So I guess because of those, I was surprised to see Avent or, uh, Avatar do really well again. Yeah. Yeah. Like, out of all the movies... Here's the thing. Avatar is a movie that I would kind of only see in theaters because the best part about it is, like, the visuals. Like, I remember seeing it, I, I'm pretty sure I was 15, you know, and I was, like, blown away. I was like, how does this movie look so good? Yeah. And now, you know, like, that was over 10 years ago. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, 2009. God. Yep. I'm fine. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, oh, God, I feel so weird about that. I, I, you know, it's an older movie now. It's, it's over 10 years old. Um, but it's, it's. Uh, Interesting. Oh, no, I'm our, having a crisis. The, the plot of Avatar is um, is Dances with Wolves. Oh, okay. I've never... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's essentially like the Disney version of Pocahontas. Yeah. Which is... Well, no, it's kind of like... Well... Yeah, it's, it's basically Disney's Pocahontas. Dances with Wolves means Blue Man Group. Honestly, the funniest part about the whole situation is just, like, Disney being like, hey, Disney, good job, Disney. <laughs> like, hey, Disney, good job. Yeah, it, it is really, it really is a testament to how much of the media landscape Disney owns. That, like, it, like, Disney congratulates Disney on Disney doing well at making Disney movies. Yeah. Is, like, the most Disney sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. But we do, we do have other news. Oh, boy. I'm just having a hard time bringing it up. Um... <laughs> Um, y'all, uh, we don't, we don't have, uh, a, a lower third for this because I, I forgot that the Oscar nominations were this morning. That's my dad. Yeah, Um, fine. but the Oscar nominations were this morning and what really stuck out to me was the fact that usually when the Oscar nominations happen, I've seen most of the movies. Um, I'm usually pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, uh, I, I, I haven't seen any of these films. Any of them? Um, except for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is fantastic, uh, and, um, I think he might win, but Chadwick Boseman, the posthumous uh, nomination for Chadwick Boseman came in for his role in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Obviously, he's most famous for playing Black Panther at this point. Um, yeah. He's known the world over for that. Um, oh, that's my phone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my mother, my mother just texted me, you both look cute today. Thanks for the shout out on the mug. I love it. I miss you. Mom, I'm in the middle of a show. <laughs> What are you? Oh, 
I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> I also love that you have your ringer on. I I forgot to turn it off. It's fine. You're fine. Yeah, You're it's mom. Teasing. It's yeah, it is. That's so funny. Um <laughs> But yeah, um Ma Rainey's Black Bottom it was my favorite movie of last year. Mm -hmm. Um I thought it was an absolutely incredible uh uh, acting extravaganza. It's incredible. Particularly from Chadwick Boseman and Viola Davis. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really into, I'm really into the fact that, uh, this is happening. I don't know. I hope he wins. I want him to win. I think yeah. he deserves it. I he think definitely... his performance is incredible. Yeah, he deserves it. If you yeah. haven't seen the movie, it's a hard watch. Uh, definitely worth it, though. The other, uh, big headline coming out of, uh, the Oscar nominations is that this is the first time in history that two women have been nominated in the same year for Best Director. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, Chloe Zhao, who nominated Nomadland, and, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the, uh, the director of Promising Young Woman. I'm so sorry. Uh, Emerald Fennell. Uh, Chloe Zhao and Emerald Fennell directed Nomadland and, uh, Promising Young Woman, respectively. This is the first time in history that two women have, uh, two female directors have been nominated in the same year. Dope. Um, which, uh, it says a lot about filmmaking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, we, we've got to see Nomad Lab. No, Nomad Land. Nomad Land. Oh, we Land. have to see it. Frances McDormand is one of my favorites. Oh my god, I can't, it's, I can't. I can't Nomad I, Land. I keep saying Mad Lad. No Mad Lad. No, no man, no, 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 oh, no, mad I land. no mad land. Yeah, yeah, I hate yeah. that so mad. I hate that so much. <laughs> but apparently it's great. Um, I'm yeah. really excited. I, I really I love, really, really love Frances McDormand in uh, Three Billboards Outside of Missouri. Uh, I, I, I just think that film was such a masterpiece of storytelling and character and, 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 you know, and telling really difficult, uh, stories really well. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think that Francis McDormand always chooses really interesting roles. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited to see this movie. Um, and I'm happy it's doing well. I'm happy to see women getting recognized for their incredible contributions to film. Uh, more of that Oscars. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's keep that going. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> um, also the Grammys were last night. Um, Oh, did anyone care? We boycotted them. Yeah. I we didn't, like, officially boycott them. But, like... I literally forgot about them. So I feel like that's the true boycott. Yeah. <laughs> Is that I literally forgot about them. Yeah. Um, The Weeknd, uh, <laughs> the guy who, um... Yep. Was the... the... I'm blinded by the light. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> uh, the incredible performer who had a really wonderful... We, we make jokes about it because... <laughs> The one shot was just funny to watch. It but, was very funny. Um, like, just imagining them filming it. But it looked cool. I really loved his um, performance at the Super Bowl. He is apparently, um, um, boy, he will not be submitting his work for consideration at the Grammys anymore. Oh. Wow. Um, after, um, you know, just being like, you know what, this is kind of a, this yeah, kind yeah. Of a racist institution. And I don't disagree with him, so we're not going to talk about the Grammys anymore. Yeah. The end. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm. Li I literally like forgot that they were happening, and I honestly like just don't care. So. Uh, this next story might be my favorite story of the day. It probably is. This is probably my favorite story of the day, which is why it's so high up on our list of things we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we are now living in the world of the techno king. Yeah, you may have heard of a a, a small um, company called Tesla. A small a small business. Yeah, yeah, small business. With um, with, with a up with, and coming with a leader who isn't very interesting. No, not, not remarkable not, not in remarkable any particular in any way. way. No, it's just like your average dude can't, names his kids perfectly normal things. <laughs> can't he? He can't change the stock market with a tweet. No, can't no, no. do that. No, who could do that? <laughs> um, a local business. Yeah, a local business. Don't tell me, Gaming. Mm -hmm. Um, so the Techno King rises, y'all, because former CEO of te mm -hmm. Tesla, Elon Musk, announced recently that he is no longer the CEO of Tesla. Yeah. He is the Techno King of Tesla. <laughs> and his chief financial officer, um, Zach Kirkhorn, shall now be known as the Master of Coin. <laughs> because... Why not? Because why the hell not, you know? This is this is like a joke in some ways, but there's also a part of it that's like, Elon Musk is like, I I don't 
I don't have to go by CEO. No. I own this company. I can do whatever I he want. He literally is like, I can do whatever the hell I want. And people will be like, yes, Elon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. To the moon, Elon. To the moon. Oh, God. Um, so, um. Th- so that happened. I-, I wanted to bring up this story because I wanted to ask you, we own the Nerdy Nightly. Oh, God. We are the owners of this company. And so mm-hmm. I wanted to know what, um what you wanted your new title at the company to be. You can call me Khaleesi. Oh, yes. So from now on, yeah. uh, Clarus will be the Khaleesi of Nerdy Nightly. Yeah. I d- I'm sure there won't be any trademark issues with that. No. Um, and, Not um, a one. Uh, what, what should my title be here? Um, the Goblin King. The Goblin King. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's from something. In it. It's from... Is that... Is it just because, like, I wear tight pants and you can see my bulge? Like, <laughs> that was a Labyrinth joke. If you guys have not seen the movie Labyrinth starring David Bowie, what? How? <laughs> I don't know. It's, I just, um, that that's was the so first funny. thing that came to mind. Oh, my I, God. I'm so sorry. Labyrinth is great. The, I'm really glad you went with Labyrinth and not The Hobbit, because that could have been really awkward. Oh, no. When I think about The Goblin King, I exclusively think of David Bowie's bulge. <laughs> Uh, exclusively yeah that that and him throwing a baby 30 feet in the air oh yeah yeah, yeah. That those movie are is, the two things that stand out to me also the lead girl in that movie is like 17 right yeah she's that movie 16 is or 17. so inappropriate yeah that movie is like wildly inappropriate yep no i think i'm gonna be known as the grandmaster jedi of nerdy nightly from now the on. grandmaster jedi Great. that is my official title you shall refer to me as such yeah yeah nothing else can you imagine trying to file our taxes? And they're like, yeah, so what job did you have at Nerdy Nightly? Oh, yeah, I was the Grand Master Jedi and she was the Khaleesi. And they're like... I'm actually... Uh, sorry, I, sh- I should have been... I should have been more clear. It's actually... Um, uh, Clara Shakara's Mother of Dragons, Breaker of Chains, Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, <laughs> um, Queen of the Andals and the First Men, and uh, Heir to the Iron Throne. I think that's the full thing. I might have missed to the, one. And Heir to the Iron Throne of Nerdy Nightly. Yeah. Yeah, that's my full title, you, it, full thing or nothing. You know, go go hard or go home. I, I accept nothing less. There's just a part of me that's like, I think that I think that Elon Musk is literally just at the point now where he's like, I I, I haven't like, done anything weird this week. Yeah, literally. He's like, hmm. It's been a slow... I haven't been in the news in like two days. Okay, but here's the thing though. If you are that rich and that smart, like what... Like, and you have enough money to hire... It, people to do everything for you what else are you gonna do with your time i guess i don't know honestly like i get it he's probably bored he's like hmm hmm i don't think he's bored isn't he <laughs> what like, are we trying gonna get, to get up to, to today mars? pinky like <laughs> we're going to take over the world <laughs> that's what it feels like the unburnt i did forget that one protector of the realm wow yeah you forgot the unburnt i know wow it's, it's, it's because I think I, I have to fire you No, now. it's because I can't be the unburnt, because if I go outside... Like, you get a sunburn like that. Yeah, that's... Thank you, Hammy. <laughs> Very oh, funny. Very God. funny. And uh, Elon Musk, um, if you ever want to invest in small businesses... Uh, hi, we're the Nerdy Nightly. Hello. Uh, we're an online entertainment company uh, that could use your support. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just go over to patreon.com slash nerdy nightly yeah. and uh, just, you know. You know, $1 tier. Just $1 tier. If Elon Musk signed up for the $1 tier on the Patreon. I would lose my mind. I would. That would be the funniest. Pa- Elon Musk, for a single dollar a month, you can just troll us so hard and yeah. we would love you for it. Yeah, truly. We'll I'm going to tweet it. that at him. <laughs> oh my God. Do, do you think Elon Musk has a Patreon account? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Do you think he has Twitch? I, I bet he has Twitch. Twitch? Probably. I feel like he has Twitch. I feel like he would be that guy. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. We are moving on to our next story here, which means we're changing. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. Professionals. Probably under a pseudonym. Can you imagine if he's one of those people who streams without a camera? To, like, five viewers? And his username is like, um, Dong Shlong or just something Dong like, Shlong. like, just something like, a, like a 12 year old boy would ha- like think is really, really funny. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, y'all in, uh, some fun Twitch gaming news. 
Um, uh, Alex Zebra. <laughs> No, you can't so read that sorry. out loud. I'm so sorry. You can't read that out loud. I forgot you can't about read it. that meme. Can't I, read it. I. But it's it's still in the video. But it is in the um, video. I forgot about that meme. Oh. Uh, Alex Zedra, an actress uh, in Call of Duty Warzone and uh, Modern Warfare's Mara, uh, got two cheaters banned on Twitch Ooh. because she was um, hosting their streams uh, on her stream and uh, was watching. And they were very clearly using an aimbot. Um, and so she was able to catch them cheating live. Um, and th by the end of the stream, both of their channels had been banned. And the two streamers both went on to uh, remove their Twitter platforms as well. Um, <clears throat> wow. Uh, she went on to tweet, uh, Thank you at Twitch for banning the most toxic hackers I've come across in my five years of being on this platform. Glad I got to witness him being banned live after calling... After being called uh, the B word, uh, and to one v one them as they're blatantly hacking. <clears throat> so yeah, um, if you're gonna cheat, don't stream it. Yeah. Like, how dumb do you have to be? I don't know. That's like that's just pretty tragic. I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I just like it's so I... cringe, and I'm sure like they <laughs> in their minds are like so like. Just like, mm, this girl, just like, being a bee, like... And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's like, no, uh, dude, like... How... How... <laughs> sad are you on the inside that you cheat at Call of Duty? Like, yeah. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, like, cheating in video games is one of those things to me. Like, here's the thing. If you win a crown in Fall Guys because you hack it, What's the point? Like, yeah. literally, like, what's the point? What what value do you get out of it? I don't know. Yeah. Like, I actually don't. It's it's so weird. Yeah, I, I just, I don't understand. I, and I guess it's just the, like, ruining the experience for other people is the point for them, maybe? I guess. But, like, how pathetic is that? Yeah. What a, like... Yeah, good riddance. Oh, my God. I just, I, and there's a part of me that just feels bad for those people. Yeah. Because, like, how little value does the rest of your life bring you if, like, that's how you get your jollies? I know. You know what I mean? Like, the best part of your day is yeah. cheating in a video game? Woof, dude. That's, like, yeah. that. that's not even, like, oh, I'm glad they're deplatformed. That's, like, we should send help, right? Yeah. Like, they, they need therapy. <laughs> yeah. Like, send hugs and flowers because, yeah, yeah that's mm. rough. I literally cannot imagine... And so it's kind of just, like, sad. Um, XQC was s stream sniping on Fall Guys? Don't get me... I don't know how stream sniping on Fall Guys even helps, though. <laughs> to target them in the morning. I don't really understand how that would help in Fall Guys. Like, he was, stream like, grabbing sniping? them or, like... Yeah, but that's, that's just Fall Guys, like... I hate that. I hate that the beans are, like... Yeah, the, like, the weird, like... The, the weird groping in Fall Guys... It's very odd. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> Remember when Fall Guys was a thing? It's still kind of a thing. Is it? Some people play it. And the last time I tried to get into Fall Guys, I literally couldn't get into a game because there weren't enough people playing. Really? Yeah, it was too hard. Like, it, we would we would wait, like, four to six minutes between matches. Damn. Like, uh, this time last year, yeah, or that's bad. when Fall Guys first came out, it was like, bum, 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 game start. And now it's like for like five minutes, and you're just kind of like, oh, it's so that he could target their bean while his team would win the match. For it was a tournament for money. Oh, he was playing for money. Oh, okay. No, that's wrong. Yeah, that's... Don't do that. Fall Guys is a weird game to do a tournament for money in, but whatever. I mean, yeah, no, that's wrong. I hate, I I hate all of that. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know who XQC is. Me neither. Oops. Oops. We're good, we're good Twitch people. I know he's huge on the platform. I've, like, seen... I, I saw, like, him put together a, uh, a computer because Linus Tech Tips was doing a reaction to oh, it. Oh, that was that guy. Yeah, but I don't know him. Like, that's the only video I've seen is him... Oh, put together a computer poorly. Oh, yeah, he does... Mm. Don't cheat in online video games. It's just, it's sad. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. It's, it's really, it's sad. Yeah, um, yeah. Just, just, just get good. 
All right, y'all, it is time to talk about the thing of all things, the, the, the big topic of the week. 35 or five minutes into the into the video. Where is my mouse? No. What it's there it is. All right, y'all. It's time to talk about the Snyder Cut because it's coming. This uh, <laughs> Thursday, streaming live on HBO Max. Hopefully streaming on Crave in Canada. That's what we've heard. Um, so I'm hoping that we're going to be able to watch it. Um, but um, the, uh, the Snyder Cut is coming um, on Thursday. Yeah. I just said that. Yeah. And Zack Snyder made some weird, uh, some rather interesting comments uh, as part of the lead up to this. I, I wanted to read this because it is uh, an interesting um, way that he looks at uh, the way that he makes superhero movies versus how Marvel does it. Uh, he said they are 100% moving away. Uh, uh, sorry, this is about uh, Warner Brothers uh, and his, uh, his Snyder cut. Uh, they're moving away. They consider the theatrical cut of Justice League as canon. That's their decision. I wish them all the best, and I hope the whole thing is a giant blockbuster on top of blockbuster on top of blockbuster. The stars of those movies are my friends, and I want them to be prosperous. Uh, I want people to love it, which I think is a really gracious thing for him to say. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would rather the Snyder Cut be the continuation of the DCU past this point, um, but that won't happen for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, I, th I think I just pulled up the wrong article. This isn't the one I wanted to read. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but yeah, how are you feeling going into the Snyder Cut on Thursday? Um, tired. I feel like I'm 80. Honestly. It's been 84 years. <laughs> like, literally, I'm like, I'm so over it. Mm -hmm. I'm so over it. And, like, here's the thing. Like, the Snyder Cut bros have, like, definitely amplified that. You know, talking about Snyder Cut stuff online is, like, a minefield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially, apparently, as a woman. Like. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, oh, God, I'm just over it. Like, we're gonna watch it, yep. and it'll be, it'll be fine. But, like, the excitement of it, like, because here's the thing. When, when, when this first was, like, this is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I was, like, this is cool. I am excited. You know, this is a this is a really interesting thing that I think they're doing, and I'm I'm really curious. And now I'm just like, God, get it over with already. <laughs> like, just you can't blame Snyder for that, though, right? Like that. No, is, I don't blame Snyder. For that, that is Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers made this process as difficult as it was. Yes, they did. Um, partially, partially by not just coming out earlier and being like, it's never going to happen. Um. Where it could, they could have just said that. And they never did. They, they, it always kind of was this, like, dangling thread. Mm -hmm. And so I get why people latch onto that dangling thread and hung on to it so hard. Yeah. But then once, once you know, the HBO Max thing started to happen, it just became such a, like... I, and I guess it just is a phenomenon, right? Like, and everyone wants to talk about it. But it just... It, ever since the HBO Max announcement, I feel like every four days there's been another like yeah. thing to talk about about yeah it. and there was another trailer that came out we reacted to it so you can go watch that mm -hmm. if you want but we basically thought that they gave too much away in this one yeah if you guys don't want to be spoiled for the movie don't watch that trailer reaction because honestly my biggest takeaway from the last trailer was that there were things in it i wish i hadn't seen yeah. that i wish had been kept for the movie yeah yeah. yeah, so... Um, these are the comments. I, I found the actual comment that... Uh, this was uh, Zack Snyder um, talking to the New York Times. Um, he said, uh, I knew it before Batman v Superman when we made Man of Steel. Marvel is doing something else. They're doing, at the highest level, this popular action comedy with a heart, and they have that nailed. Uh, an effort to duplicate that is insanity because they're so good at it. What DC had was a mythology on an epic level, and we we're going to take them on this amazing journey. Frankly, I was the only one saying that. Uh, which is true. Like, I think that he had a different take, for sure. Um, but he went on to say, um, BVS, uh, Batman movie Superman, love it or hate it, it's probably the most mentioned movie in hashtags and references. It's the closest thing to a cult film that could exist at this level of pop culture. Am I a provocateur? A little bit. Is it my job to make some pop culture piece of candy that you eat and forget about the next day? Nah. I would rather, um, m m F you up in a movie, uh, than make it nice and pretty for everybody. Let's be frank, there's no cult of Aquaman. Jason is a force of nature, and by all means, I want there to be 100 Aquaman movies because he's an awesome guy, but it's not controversial, and I have purposely, because I love it, made the movies difficult. Um, and so this, this comment has, this comment has garnered, like, a, a few interesting reactions online, because Zack Snyder is essentially admitting that he made the movies difficult. That's his exact quote. Um, I'm gonna create crap so people talk about it more. I, it's not about crap. It's about creating controversial content. 
I hate it. I, I hate it. I, and I, here's the worst part. I get it. But I hate that so much. Like, oh my god. Especially because, like, because I have been, like, personally attacked for hating on Batman v Superman in the past few weeks. That, like, literally Snyder himself has been like, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I did it on purpose. And yeah. Oh my god. Well, now he's admitting. He's straight up being like, no, 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 I did that on purpose. I wanted I literally, wanted people to be upset about it. Yeah, literally the next person who comments on one of our videos being like, you just don't get Batman v Superman, I'm gonna be like, well, neither does Zack Snyder. <laughs> um, oh my god. Richardson7 uh, says, how about instead of making controversial content, you make good content? I don't, I, here's the thing, I don't have a problem with controversy, right? Like, I think that art has every good art is controversial absolutely and there is something to be said for the fact that the snyder movies have garnered a lot of conversation around them and there's a lot of subjective conversation to be had and i have no problem with that mm -hmm. i think that the line for me is when the conversation becomes about my problem with the snyder stuff isn't really the snyder stuff it is this online persona that some people have that the snyder movies are the greatest things ever and there's nothing bad about them. And if you are in any way not fully 100% devoted to the, the the message that it's perfection, then you are called names, that you're called slurs, that yeah. like you're attacked. Like I, I think that's that's the problem I have. And what's weird about these comments is that Snyder is like admitting that he likes that there's like that kind of a cult around his films. Yeah, and that is really problematic. Because it's not, here's the thing, a controversial film is not the same as, like, a bad film that causes controversy around it. Because Su Batman v Superman is a bad movie. It's a bad movie. It's, it's not that it deals with controversial or in-depth topics. It's that it just doesn't work, and it's not good, and it's not done well. It's and messy. It, 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 it is. It's not a good film. And so, for him to say that, I just, I am less excited for the Snyder Cut. Yeah, me too. Uh, th th these comments are odd to me. And I don't think they're necessary. I, I think that this is, uh, like Rubble says, this is a pretty narcissistic statement to make. Yeah. Like, Aquaman doesn't have a cult, but I have a cult. And I'm over here like, my dude. <laughs> my dude. Don't you, don't you dare talk about Aquaman that way. Also, Aquaman is... Aquaman the movie is... I finally saw it, guys. It's better. It's a great film. Like, yeah. James Wan made a really fun, interesting, funny... It's good. ...action comedy mm -hmm. that is huge in scope and scale. And, like, I, I just... I don't... Yeah. I, I don't... And here's the other... Here's what's also weird about it. He's, like, wants to talk of DC... Well, he, first of all, I want to say his comments about Marvel, great. Like, yeah. I, I appreciate that he's, like, no, what they're doing is great. I'm not going to disparage it. Like, that's... He has, like, the right attitude in the first part... And then the second part, he's like, but there's no cult of Aquaman. And I'm like, why are you, why are yeah. you crapping on Aquaman? And, well... <laughs> where, where, where is, where is the, where, where is this coming about that Aquaman, it, Aquaman made over a billion dollars and Batman v Superman didn't. Like, That's true. You had, you had the first appearance of those two characters in a movie together. And like, you can say like, it's the most talked about online. Sure. But it didn't, it didn't make a billion dollars. It's the most talked about online because you have toxic fans who won't let it die. Like you have, nah, yeah. you, you have, you have this like gross mentality around your films, and honestly, that's not something to be proud of. If the Snyder you should be ashamed. If the Snyder bro, what you know, whatever that name that's been put on them, and maybe Snyder's name should be taken off of it because I don't think I don't it's know. his fault. Now it seems like he's into it. Well, yeah, but. Um, if that if that community wasn't as difficult to deal with online as they are, I wonder if I would have a different reaction to these movies. But I wonder like how much that interacting with that online has um, it just made me feel tired of these films. Yeah. Because yeah. here's the thing: we watched the tri the teaser for Army of the Dead, his ne next movie, and I'm super excited. I love the way that he shoots movies. Right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't I don't hate Zack Snyder movies, but God, I'm so tired of his superhero movies just because this discourse has gotten so exhausting. Yeah. And I just want to like my Superman movie. You know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. I just, I like Superman. I just want to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you are making it very difficult to enjoy. This actually, this like really bothers me. It is weird. I, I think that using the word cult is weird. Yeah. 
Also, he's like, he in, in the first comments I talked about, the ones I didn't actually mean to talk about, but he's talking about how he's disappointed that Warner Brothers is going to use the Joss Whedon Justice League as the canon moving forward, and that this movie won't be. But then at the same time, he's like, am I a provocateur? And I'm a little bit like, dude, like, if you want your movie to be the canon in the big budget superhero universe, you can't be the provocateur. You kind of have to, like, tell the superhero stories that's four quadrant. Yes. You have, you have to make the a story already exists. Dollars. That's the problem. The story already exists. If you want to go make something else creative, like, you know, by all means, mm-hmm. do that. The, like, these are the stories that are already out and beloved, and changing them... You can take a creative take on something, but you can't change them. Yeah. And look, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. I love the Guardians of the Galaxy. But the Guardians of the Galaxy should not be making more money than Superman at the box office. If, if, If the Guardians of the Galaxy are beating Superman at the box office, then something has gone wrong. And many things have gone wrong. Well, yeah. But, but like that, but like there's no, there's no greater, there's no greater like barometer for how successful big budget movies are than how much money they make. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how many people enjoyed them. And... And to be to be fair, neither ba- the Batman v Superman cut in theaters wasn't his cut, and like we watched the Ultimate Edition, it's a much better film. It is a significantly improved film over the uh, over the theatrical cut. I know you think so, but I I don't. It's better. It's not that much better because it's longer and it's but it but it takes drags. out the like but it takes out the incoherence of Lois Lane's story. Sure, sure. Like, there's but it there's drags. stuff in there's stuff in the theatrical cut that literally is so mind-numbingly dumb. Yeah, because it doesn't make any sense. That they fix in... That the Ultimate Edition... Not fix, because it was the what Zack Snyder wanted in theaters, but um, that they actually fix. and Or, or that, that, that are that are finished, that are fleshed out. Yeah. The, there's a lot about the Ultimate Edition that is a much better film. It doesn't make it a good film. Yeah. But it's much better than a film that I've always thought was kind of incoherent. Yes. Um, yes, for sure. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the Snyder... I'm still excited to watch this. I'm just tired of this side of it. And because this is what we do, it's hard for us to get away from it. I think that, here's the thing, I think there are a lot of people who don't do a new show, who don't talk about nerd stuff on stream every day, who don't like, whose like life hasn't become this, Mm -hmm. this isn't their job, who probably are unaware of all this and just don't care. Yeah. And I'm kind of jealous. Like, what is it like? (laughs) What is it like? (laughs) We, here, you know what? At the end of the day, we did this to ourselves. (laughs) All right. It would kind of be wonderful to walk into the Snyder Cut on Thursday without any of this. No baggage. Yeah. Just having seen the trailers, because the trailers are both good. Like, I have not had a problem with either trailer. Mm-hmm. I've enjoyed both trailers. Yeah. To be to be completely honest, I've enjoyed both trailers quite a bit. The, the, the thing that makes me feel weird is the online life of this movie and how they interact with our content. <laughs> yeah. Now, hmm, I feel like this is like, I, I, I feel like... I'm gonna compare this to sports. <laughs> whoa! No, no, no! It's like whoa. no, no, no! It's, it's called, whoa! What's happening? It, no, it's like I don't know a goddamn thing about football, and so like I have no problems when it's just on the TV, and I have no like stock in it. I'm just like, oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? It's okay. the same like as like walking into like the movie and not knowing any of the backstory or baggage behind it, and being like, oh, cool, that was cool. You know, whereas like football fans, like they get so into it and and they you know they get really really happy when their Mm -hmm. team does well and they get so upset when their team loses and i feel like right now my team is losing snyder you're letting me down don't be like this (laughs) don't be like this all right well on that note we're going to move on to a little bit more about the dceu here because we've had some rather interesting shakeups uh in the world of the flash um uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, there is a Flash movie coming. It has been coming for quite a while. Um, oh, there's the article I need. Uh, it's been coming for quite a while. It's had uh, 76 different directors. Um, it's had about 97 different uh, cast members. Um, Jesus. And it looks like we're finally getting to the point where uh, this movie is this movie is in production. So, so here we go. But uh, th- there's a couple of weird things com- going on. Um, the first one isn't weird. The first one is wonderful. Kiersey Clemens has been um, brought back as Iris West um, from the Snyder Cut of Justice League. Uh, Kiersey Clemens was originally cast as um, Barry Allen's uh, uh, adopted sister. Well, he's adopted, but their brother, sister, and then uh, later on love interest. Um, the Barry Allen Iris West storyline is always a little weird for that reason. Um, okay. Do you know the story of The Flash? Like the original story of The Flash? 
the, all I know about <clears throat> the Flash is that he reverses time. Okay. Um, so the Flash, uh, Barry Allen, uh, his mother is murdered in front of him when he's a yeah. child. Mm -hmm. uh, and his father is blamed for it. Uh, it's actually the reverse Flash who came back in time from the future and murdered his mother. Um, but, you know, that guy moves so fast that, you know, the police think that his dad did it. So his dad goes to jail and he goes to live with his next door neighbor, um, the West family. Uh, and so uh, he moves in and Iris is his sister there. And he's raised with her, but he falls in love with her. And then as adults, they get married. Um, and then she becomes Iris West Allen. So he marries his sister. So he marries... It's, it's like... It, like, works if you don't think about it too much. But it's in, it's just been in the comics for so long now. The, the Flash TV show did it really well. Okay. But, yeah, it's it, it, it's always been a little... There is always an element of, like... <sighs> yeah, I guess there's, like, a reason that, like, step-sibling porn is very popular. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to blame the Flash. Yeah, I, I thought the TV show... I, I, I thought the TV show handled it really well because Iris... They, they, they both are a little weird about it at first. Like, they acknowledge the weirdness. I think it's uh, if you acknowledge the weirdness and they, like, work through it, which they did on the show over a couple of seasons, mm -hmm. um, it, it works. And I, I don't know, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's just it's always a funny thing to introduce to, like, non-comic book readers when you're like, yeah, they're, so they're kind of brother and sister, but they're also married. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a bit, a bit of both. Um, but Kiersey Clemens is an absolutely fantastic actress. Um, and she was cut out of the Justice League cut of um, the Justice League cut. Justice League. Yeah, the Justice League cut of us, uh, the Justice League. Uh, and uh, along with many other people of color, um, quite notably. Uh, and so I'm really excited that Warner Brothers did not move on to another actress. I was really excited when Kiersey Clemens was first announced for Justice League back uh, five or six years ago now. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, I think she's really talented and I, I'm glad that she's getting this chance uh, to come back Give us the Iris West that we want. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm excited for Iris uh, to get a chance in the movies. I hope that they do something to make her different from Lois Lane. Um, uh, in the comics, Iris really is a clone of Lois Lane. There's a lot. Not actually. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of... I love that you have to clarify that because it's superheroes. Because it's comics. It could be. <laughs> like... um, a lot of the... Um, a lot of the women in the DC comics from the early days of comics are mm, clones of Lois Lane. They kind of took the, like, spunky reporter and they gave every, like, one except Batman a spunky reporter girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. Uh, so I Iris kind of exists in that role in the comics and I'm hoping that uh, in... She will... She, Kiersey Clemens' Iris West will be in the Snyder Cut on Thursday. Uh, and so I'm hoping this character will get to have her own kind of interesting life that's a little bit more different from Lois Lane's than some of the interpretations of this character have been. Yeah. Because... Um, I Iris can be really, really dope, and uh, she's great on the show. I, I can't pull that actress's name right now, but I really like the actress who plays Iris West on the Flash TV show. Um, and so I'm hoping Kiersey Clemens is another great um, Iris. Yeah, it's going to be super interesting. Um, so, uh, sorry to go back to the, the Snyder Cut, but there's going to be like new people in it that we didn't see from the other. Yeah. Movie, so that's going to be super strange. It's also um, interesting that it isn't canon. But Kiersey Clemens will continue on. So I wonder yeah. if the, the Kiersey Clemens scenes in Justice League will be canon, even though the Snyder Cut isn't canon in The Flash. Y yeah. Or if they'll do a new introduction of her in The Flash, because the only canon introduction of her doesn't exist because it's not canon. Yeah. That is that is a little confusing. Yeah. Like, will you have to have seen the Snyder Cut, which is only streaming, right? So, like, yeah. it's only available to people who have HBO Max. Will you have to see it to understand Iris West's character in The Flash? That's going to be an interesting question. I'm assuming most people who are going to see The Flash will see the uh, Snyder Cut. Um, it's going to be very easily available. but Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, huh, doesn't Batman have a... Yes, uh, Batman has Vicky Vale. Um, oh, there's a lot of spunky reporters. Or it's not always spunky reporters, but it's like spunky woman who works with superhero in their secret identity job. Right? Because mm. like Carol Ferris kind of fits that role for Green Lantern. Um, Iris West... Um, Batman's is Vicky Vale. Um, obviously Selena Kyle's different and Selena Kyle is my, uh, I, Selena Kyle is the best love interest in the DC, in all of DC comics. Um, it, for a main hero, for like a, an original hero, the best love interest, uh, the best couple in DC comics is always going to be Dick Grayson and, uh, Barbara Gordon. Um, they're the best. 
there, yeah. Night, Nightwing and Oracle is the best relationship in DC. Um, I will I will die on that hill. I will fight people for it. All right. Um, yeah, Aquaman doesn't really have that. because But even Mera is, like, at his job. But she's also a superhero. So Aquaman is kind of different in that way. Yeah. But, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's, there, there was... A, the, early comics, a lot of the female characters are just kind of, like, the woman. Yeah. They, they have different names, but they're all kind of, like... The generic. It's the superhero. Here's our template. And here's the woman who is next to the superhero. And it took a lot of... It took a long time for those characters to get fleshed out into the interesting female characters they are now. Mm-hmm. Um, Lois Lane was always the one that kind of stood out. Um, yeah. Just because she was this intrepid reporter. And, you know, they actually... They, they did a lot with Lois. Partially because of the, the movies and the serials. Like, Lois Lane was brought into live action so early that, like, she had to be fleshed out a little more because she wasn't just a comic book character. She was, like... You know, the actresses who played her in the early serials and whatnot brought more life to her than the comics would. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that character developed faster, in my opinion, because of that than um, someone like Iris or these characters who only existed in ink for a long time. Right. But Thompson says Wally West and Linda Park. <sighs> Ooh, Thompson, that is a good couple, but it is not Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon, so you're wrong. <laughs> also, Linda Park isn't a redhead, so. <laughs> yeah. You get bonus points if you're a redhead. Yeah. All my favorite couples in comics are redheads. That's true. Aquaman, Aquaman and Mara, Mara. Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon. Uh, Spider-Man and Mary Jane. Yeah. Um, I think you have a type. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Do I? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, although the comic where Superman put, uh, has one of his super robots put Lois Lane over 30 and spank her was really strange. Yeah, early comics are weird. Early comics are super weird. We have more Flash news, though. We're not done with the Flash cast news. Um, the Flash news. So, um, in and addition then, to Kiersey Clements... And then Shin has a question for you. Oh, yeah, Shin, put your question in the chat and I'll answer it once we're done with the Flash news, I promise. Mm -hmm. Um, Maribel... Sorry, I need to pull up this actress's last name. Um, <laughs> Maribel Verdu... Uh, is has been cast as Barry Allen's mother, mm -hmm. which is interesting, uh, which means we're going to watch this woman die, which is unfortunate, um, because she's probably very talented. Yeah. Um, in fact, I know she's very talented. I don't know why I said she's probably. She is very talented. She is fantastic in Pan's Labyrinth, which you just had me watch. Oh, she was... She's the, um, the, 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 the not the nanny. She's the woman the who, cook. like, sneaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, uh, she's, she's been cast. Good. She's very good. Um... Uh, and she's been nominated twice for the Goya Award, which I think is, like, a prestigious award in Europe for film. But, um, but it just I makes me think it. of Goya Beans, um, which is very funny to me. Uh, in, in, in New York, you know what Goya Beans are. You know, if you go to your bodega, you're getting some Goya Beans. You know, they're, they're on the counter. If you want some black beans, you go, you go, you go to your bodega, you get some Goya Beans. Um, so the fact that she has two Goya Awards, really, it just, uh, it's something else. She's also an Itu Mama Tambien, which is an incredible film. Mm. Um, but uh, on the flip side of that, his other parent, the very, very important um, parent of uh, Barry's dad, Henry Allen, uh, who was cast in the Snyder Cut as uh, Henry Crudup, who is a character who I, sorry, not, um, not Henry Crudup, um, Billy Crudup playing Henry Allen, my bad, um, has dropped out due to scheduling conflict. Ooh, and so this is an interesting one because Kiersey Clements will go from the Snyder Cut to the Flash movie, but Billy Crudup will not, will be in the Snyder Cut, but won't be in the Flash movie. Confusing. Oh my god. Um. <laughs> yeah, we do need a family tree of like... Of who played who and what, yeah. Oh, this won't be too bad. Obviously, like, Rhodey was played by different people, um, uh, in the, um... In the uh, between Iron Man and Iron Man Two, mm -hmm. um, obviously mm -hmm. Don Cheadle replaced uh, that role. So like this happens, it happens yeah. sometimes. It's the nature um, of the business. But um, yeah, uh, that's the Flash news. I'm 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 sad Billy Crudup's not gonna be in it. He's a really incredible actor, and I was excited for his Henry Allen. Um, but you know, scheduling conflicts are scheduling conflicts, and it happens. Yeah. Uh, Shin wanted to know how do I feel about some redhead characters being instead played by African American actors. Oh, interesting. Um, I don't have like a specific problem with that. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't have any like, I, it depends. I think on the portrayal, I, 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 here's the thing. I don't really care like 
what color the characters are in things if the story's good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I, I, I don't I don't mind. Like, as long as it's a good actress in the role or a good actor in the role, you, you can cast whatever race you want. Um, as long as it's not whitewashing a narrative that shouldn't be told by that person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have any significant, I, I don't have, I, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like I've never, I've never been someone who thinks that characters should be cast certain races. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain characters that should for sure. You know, if you told me that Black Lightning was going to be played by KJ Appa, right? Take a redhead into that black role. I would, I would, be like, no. I would be, you know, in the picket line for that one. Um, I also don't think he's a real redhead, so... I'm also sorry to bring up KJ Appa in that. I, I do not think that he would make that choice, and I'm not insinuating anything about him. No, no, no. I, he was just the first redheaded man I could think of. Yeah. Um, because of Riverdale. Um, I, I have no problem with white characters being played by black actors, Asian actors, Latino actors. I would love to see more Latino and Asian representation in film right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we've seen a lot of um, movement forward in black representation, uh, yeah. and there's still more that needs to be done, but I would love to see more of that. Um, but especially, I, I think Asian representation in film um, is, and Latino representation in film can can go a lot further than it has lately. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love to see that. I would be very interested in, um, you know, th there's a really awesome Asian Superman in DC Comics. It's all, not Clark Kent, obviously, but um, th there's a Chinese Superman in DC Comics that was introduced like four or five years ago. Um, and uh, it's a, he's a fascinating character. He's a wonderful Superman character. And I would love to see a movie based on him. Um, yeah. You know, we're in a weird time where there's so much anti-Asian violence in the world right now. Um, that's just racism based on the coronavirus and, and, you know, the fallout of that and who has been blamed for that. And I, I, would, I would literally have no problem. Or not no problem. I would love to see more... Um, Darcy Spetch brings up more indigenous representation as well. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah, I was actually, like, kind of mad. We watched Suicide Squad last night. Oh, yeah, I, di I, I, I didn't even tell you about that beforehand, too. No, you. I had no idea. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. We've got an assortment of characters who we spent way too long introducing. That's fine. Yeah. Um, and then there's this this um, indigenous man who is... Who doesn't get an introduction. Doesn't get an introduction, yeah. doesn't get any lines, and then gets killed right away. And has and his like, head blown off. 10 seconds after being in the movie. Yeah, I was yeah. like, uh... The old, okay, and they made such a big deal of it, too, leading up to the movie. They were like, we have our first indigenous super character as Slipknot in the movie. And people were like, oh, dope. Like, Well, and, and I thought, like... Head I, blown up. I was excited. I was like, oh, cool. This is gonna... And literally, and then he died, and I was like, what the... Like, I, mm. I was actually, like, pissed. It's like, okay. Um, I... The only... The only time, um... Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly why explicitly white characters are changed. I would rather just see interesting characters written with specifically races in mind. Um, it's, Taters, I think the reason white characters are changed is because there is an abundance of white characters written. Um, yeah. and then, and, and so there's just, there, there are, there's space for those characters to be written and to, to be played by other races because yeah. the characters, their, their whiteness does not inform their experience in yeah. any way. The only time I think that you... The only characters I think that can't be played by people of color are Bruce Wayne. I don't think you can have a black Bruce Wayne or no, a person of color as Bruce Wayne. because that privilege is, like, yeah. next level. Because the character doesn't exist, right? Yeah. Like, the you ha Bruce Wayne is a testament and, and is a commentary on white privilege mm -hmm. and white money and white old money in a way that I don't think that you could have a person of color play that. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting to have him be mixed race um, and have like the white side of his family be where the money comes from and there'd be conflict in him from that. Um, but I don't think that Bruce Wayne can be played explicitly by a person of color because... Yeah. It, it's not that a Batman can't be. It's it's that oh, Bruce no, no. Wayne Oh, no, no. And I love Javicia Leslie as Batwoman, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think she's actually doing a, a really good job as Batwoman right now on mm -hmm. the CW show. It's it's that specifically Bruce Wayne is a character so steeped in white privilege that I think that if you take that white privilege out of Bruce Wayne, he doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. It just becomes weird. I, I don't think that a black person in that position would respond with violence on poor people the way that a white person does. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, for sure. <clears throat> I think... Um, I, I also... I, I There's also times when I think that there are certain Jewish characters where being Jewish is such a huge... Being ethnically Jewish is such a huge part of their character that um, when they are taken when the the jewish aspect of their character is taken out of their character 
um, whether by casting a non-ethnically Jewish white person or a, a person of another ethnicity, mm-hmm. typically what happens is they cast someone of another ethnicity and then they just make them not Jewish anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, you know, it, at times it feels like, I, I think there are a lot of people rather who would classify Jewish as white. And so they say that that's not a problem. Um, but, um, there has been a very, very well-documented history of violence against Jewish people by everybody else on earth. Um, and I think that, um, Jewish stories are important. And I think that, um, I, I think that it is harmful to a a, a huge culture to, um, have Jewish eraser in film. And I, Mm -hmm. I don't always support that. Um, I, I just think that it's important that some of these cultures be allowed to be represented by the characters that represent them best. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, that we don't just kind of discredit things like that. Um, so it's complicated. It, it is a complicated question. But at the yeah. same time, like, I, I really support... Uh, I, I support more representation as, as much as we can get. And um, uh, I agree with Darkest Patch. Uh, that's a traumatic thing. Uh, the, the Suicide Squad was probably very traumatic for Indigenous viewers to see the only... Yeah. Indigenous person on screen be immediately killed off. Yeah. In a moment that, like, works for the Suicide Squad, and I totally get that. It's not that it doesn't work within the context of the movie, but you basically used an Indigenous person to keep... To, to give all the other people... To all the other people of different races a reason to stay alive. Like, yeah, it, yeah. It's questionable. Yeah. Definitely yeah. questionable. Could have been handled a lot differently. Yeah. But, you but know. He's also He's also the only member of the Suicide Squad to die. Yeah. So it's kind of like... Yeah, you're like, really? Uh, okay. It's the Suicide Squad and one member of that squad dies. That movie's trash. And yeah. which is nothing against David Ayer. I think David Ayer is a brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant director. He just, he was given six weeks of prep work to make that movie. Literally six weeks to make that movie. Of, of like, pre-production. Like, Warner Brothers shafted him so hard. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, <clears throat> that's crappy. Uh, Tom Seam is saying, uh, back in the 40s and 50s, when a lot of these characters uh, were being created, redheads were used as a sidekick side character because the Irish were the acceptable marginalized demographic, and DC has replaced a larger than number, uh, average uh, number of African Americans who are another marginalized demographic. It, it is interesting. That, that is interesting. Like, yeah, that a lot of characters who are like the redhead, which is um, by a lot of people seen as like the odd one out, to then be replaced by a like minority. It's, 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 uh, kind of an odd Yeah, because, um, choice. Zendaya is playing Mary Jane in the Spider-Man movies. Yeah, Tris Marigold um, was played Marigold. by, I, I don't know the actress's name, but a person of color. Um, yeah, that is interesting. Actually, it is, like, it seems like a disproportionate number of redheads other, over other hair-colored white people. Is yeah. that a weird sentence? No, no, I make sense. I don't have a problem with it though. I, I, I'm like Zendaya no, is so good as Mary Jane. It's fine. It's just an interesting like I, it's, it's interesting because I'm like, what is it about this situation that makes like, yeah, I don't. And I, I guess the question, I guess the question that we have to, uh, the, the question we have to ask ourselves if we want to be a more informed people, right, mm-hmm. is how much of that is informed by us wanting to fill the other the the sidekick role with the person of color and not being willing to put the person of color in the leading role yeah you know what i mean and it isn't it it is an interesting Mm -hmm. question right why are we always why is it always the 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 those characters Mm -hmm. that we would call the other in those situations that are being um uh cast as other races yeah instead of the lead yeah um because it is it is pretty consistently that right like it, it, it's pretty pretty it's it's apparent right yeah um and i think that we all just have to recognize that and try and do better and you know i think that when movies come out that do have ethnic leads we we have to do our best to support them and you know i really i want shang chi to be a huge huge epic hit right because mm-hmm. it, it, it shang chi will be the first like asian led giant superhero film and i love everyone involved in it and I just, I want it to be, I just want it to succeed so yeah. much. Um, because, you know, I think that Shang-Chi could do for, like, Asians in superhero films what I think that Wonder Woman kind of succeeded at in um, in putting forward, like, female-led, female-directed film. Um, and I would love to see that. I, I want more, more representation and, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um... 
Uh, I wonder also if some studios consider their casting according to money first, and then every cons- other consideration comes second to that. It's always money first. It's always money. It's always money first. Yeah. Here's here's the truth. Because here's the... The producers get the final say, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. The producers have the money, Mm -hmm. and they they have the power and the control. So, yeah. That's (laughs) that's it. There are a number of producers in Hollywood who... And, like, I don't have names. I don't know who they are. But there are are producers in Hollywood who would rather not work with minorities. And I know this because I have spoken with actors who are in the... uh, Of minority races who have dealt with this. Who cast people of color in their films because they don't want to deal with the backlash of having all-white films. Because it is... It is... They make more money by having those people in their films. Because it's not out of the goodness of their hearts sometimes. That's just the reality. There's a lot of crappy people. Yep. Who have really... Who have a lot of money. Who have money jobs. Um, yeah. And the, the the more we call that out and the more we work on that as an industry, the better we're going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're going to get more diverse stories. And yeah. like, w- the, the world is better when we get more diverse stories. I believe that yeah. in my heart. Um, and, you know, I it's, it's why... The, the Ray Fisher stuff is, is important, right? It's why Ray Fisher's accusations against Warner Brothers are important. Yeah. Because it is important that the people at the top of these companies are held responsible when they don't want... Um, they don't want people of color in their films. Unless it makes them money. And I think that that is, I, I think that is a problem across mm-hmm. the board in Hollywood. Yeah. All right. We have other news stories. We need to move on. Oh, hey. Yeah, because we can't stay super long today. Nope, but uh, we, it's you know the new ninety. It's the new ninety minute nightly weekly morning the new Monday show. Ninety minute show. nightly morning show on Mondays. <laughs> uh, this is a fun one. I'm very excited about this, and I hope that you all are as well. Check out the overlay. Oh my god, it's gonna change because professional. Y'all, we have Powerpuff Girls. Yes, we do. We have Powerpuff Girls. Um, we found out, uh, this feels like it was like two weeks ago, but it was this week. I know, right? Um, I think it was because it was like on Monday or Tuesday last week. The CW version of the Powerpuff Girls has been cast um, with Chloe Bennett from um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Dove Cameron from Descendants. Descendants? Descendants, yeah. Des- I can't pronounce that word. Um, as well as uh, some uh, an off-Broadway musical that some of my friends were in. Um, she was in the off-Broadway version of um, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like a it was a off-Broadway a musical version of a movie. Uh, and then Yana Parole, who was in Jagged Little Pill, I think on Broadway. Oh, nice. That's the only Jagged Little Pill I know. Yeah, that's the only one I know as well. Um, are set to play Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, the Powerpuff Girls in the CW's reimagining of these characters. Uh, The synopsis is this. The Powerpuff Girls follows the trio, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, who used to be America's pint-sized heroes. Now they're disillusioned 20-somethings who resent having lost their childhood to crime fighting. Will they agree to reunite now that the world needs them more than ever? Oh, jeez. I'm so excited. I love this casting. Um, so it's adult. Yeah, Miller. So the idea is that they're in their 20s and, um, they're, they're pissed off about the fact that they spent their, their childhood fighting crime. Yeah. And I'm super, oh, Clueless off Broadway. That was it. Yeah. I, my friend, um, my friend Talia was in that with her, um, and said that she is an absolute delight to work with. Had yeah. nothing but kind things to say about her, which was, uh, nice to hear. It's yeah. always nice when... People are nice. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Um, but um, yeah, this is like a many years later, as yeah. like yeah, as young adults. Well, no, adults, twenty somethings. They're they're adults. I like this casting quite a bit. I think that Dove Cameron. I think that Dove Cameron is is perfect for the role. I think that I don't know Yana Parole, um, but I'm I'm or Perot. I, I don't know her, but I'm excited for her. Um, but uh, I'm also really excited for Chloe Bennett. I think that this is an interesting move for her after uh agents of shield Mm -hmm. um obviously she has she's got that agents of shield money she's doing all right um because they went six seasons so you know that's in syndication Mm -hmm. um but uh i i think you know she she's kind of on agents of shield she was part of more of an ensemble and i have a feeling that this uh the the three these three girls will be the leads of the show Mm -hmm. um and so this is kind of a a front and center moment for her um and a a show that i think is going to have a lot of press a lot of publicity um a lot of people my age are going to be watching the show you know yeah all of the 20 something bisexuals who you know needed power puff girls in their lives at that age are going to be very into this yeah um yeah 
Uh, Misguided Gamers, I have not yet gotten a callback from Mojo Jojo, um, but I think that it might be offer only. So like, I'm kind of just anticipating a call because yeah. uh, CW, can I please be Mojo Jojo? Can I please, for the love of God, even if he's only in like a flashback to when they were kids, can I please be Mojo <laughs> oh Jojo? God. It's all I want in the world is to be Mojo Jojo, just so that I can say I was Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo. Um, this is not the casting I'm waiting for, though. This is cool, and I love Chloe Bennett, and so mm-hmm. I'm really into this. But um, how do you feel about... Uh, who, who do you want to be the young... Because ver- they're going to do flashbacks, right? We have to see them as the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, boy. Yeah, who's going to play them as children? Do you think that they'll de-age like, the faces of these three actresses and put them on little bodies? Oh, God. Uh, I hate that. I hope not. No, I hope that there's no flashback stuff. I want their, I want to see I want to see live action Powerpuff Girls, although it is it is CW budget, so it probably I don't know how good it's gonna yeah, look. Yeah, they'd but... be child actors. It would be like sketchy CGI. Just put Snapchat baby filters on them. That's so funny. Oh my god, can you imagine filming a TV show in a Snapchat filter? No. So that they look young. That's no. hilarious. I hate that. They're, do, do you think they're going to have... Like, they're, they're disillusioned and don't want to be superheroes, right? That's, like, the premise. But do you think they'll have superhero costumes? They kind of have to, right? They have to give them, like... They will by the end. Yeah, by the end they will. All right. Here's here's the question, though. How sexy are those costumes going to be? And how probably, many cosplayers are going to cosplay them? They're, they're probably going to be hot. They're, they're going to be hot. They're going to be capitalizing on this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're going to be hot as hell. It'll be hoodies and for I'm sure. And I'm definitely going to cosplay Buttercup, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I got it. Uh, <laughs> how many cosplayers? All of them. Every cosplayer. Yeah. Me uh, and David. Probably David, too. We'll ooh. make you bu- bubbles. I'll be bubbles. I would be bubbles. Or blossom. No, I would be blossom. I'm the redhead. Okay, then, I, then I'll then i be bubbles or buttercup. <laughs> Maybe I'll be both. It'll be you in the middle, and then I'll be the other two on both sides. Like. Yeah, it's great. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Kate in our chat has a Bubbles cosplay. Perfect. Bubble cup. Bubble cup. <clears throat> oh, Do you think God. they're going to make their eyes really big like they did for that movie? No, um, no. What was that movie? Ba- uh, Alita Battle Angel? They'll just make their eyes like way too large? I hope not. I need Rowdy Rough Boys. <gasps> I could be one of the Rowdy Rough Boys. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I guess they all still exist. Oh, wait. Are they going to be, like, each dating a rowdy rough boy? Is that going to be the, like, plot of this? Oh, wow. Yeah, probably. Guys, this is literally... If this... I'm so excited for this show! As long as it's better than Riverdale, then that's fine. It needs to be at least seven times better than Riverdale for me to enjoy it. Did they do a Totally Spies live-action thing? I don't know if they did. I love Totally Spies. I'm not sure if they did. Totally Spies was dope. Hmm. That show made no sense. They were spies, but their outfits were so brightly colored. Like, every time I watched that show, I was like, how do, how are you not caught immediately everywhere you go? You yeah. bright yellow, shining like the sun, latex wearing insane human. Yeah. Yeah. The, the mysteries of the world. <clears throat> oh, God. Yeah, Riverdale's pretty bad. Totally Spies is just Powerpuff Girls with technology instead of superheroes. Yeah, and they're older, too. Like, it, it's a different, like, age. Yeah, they're not children. Yeah. The, the Powerpuff Girls... The, the interesting thing about Powerpuff Girls is that they were so young that this this introduces, like, a whole other idea to the show, right? Like, they mm-hmm. can have re- relationships and romance and all that yeah. stuff. It's, it's, it's going to be a brand new thing, just capitalizing on the Powerpuff Girls name. One of them is... It's the CW, so, like, one of them is going to... Um, one of them is going to be into, like... One of them will be probably suicidal. One of them will be dealing with the fact that they're, like, one of them will come out. Yeah, um, and one's going to sleep around a lot. And one of them will be, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's the CW. It's the, those are the tropes. Those are the tropes you can have as a woman. Okay, so based on, based on them as a child, and knowing this is a CW, which Powerpuff Girl is going to be a lesbian? <sighs> which? Um, <laughs> mm. And that's not a joke. That's not a joke about anything other than the fact that I've watched a lot of CW shows and I know how this is gonna go. <laughs> which one here's of them the, is gonna be a stripper? Here's the exactly, thing. hardcore uh, soft popcorn. I, which one? I would think like here's the thing. I would think that like just like first instinct, it would definitely uh, definitely be Buttercup. Interesting. Okay. Okay. But I hope that it's Bubbles. Interesting. I hope that I hope that Bubbles is either by. 
or mm-hmm. LGBTQ, um, that would make me like truly happy. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I, I would love that. Blossom is definitely, definitely the, the, the rowdy one. The rowdy one, maybe. <laughs> Blossom will come out as bi, Bubble sleeps around, and Buttercup is emo. <laughs> oh, God. Well, because Buttercup is always so bitter in the show. Like, what if it, like, but what but what if they're, like, different and as, like, like puberty changed them, right? Like, maybe, like, Bubbles is the emo one now. Maybe yeah. she's, like, maybe she's, like, tired of being, being some, like... Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, th- one of them is definitely going to be a bartender. Buttercup. Right? Like, one Buttercup of them has to work in a bar. Buttercup is going to be, like, a flare bartender... Who just makes killer money? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just I love I I love how like the, the, the no that's of... why I want I want it to be bubbles <clears throat> I want I want bubbles to have like this just a wholesome relationship with another lady and it would make me really happy. I, one of my favorite things. So I was at a C I was at a CW um uh panel at Comic Con a few years ago mm-hmm. um and they showed a trailer for Riverdale. And, is a goat yoga instructor. Um, is a goat yoga yes. instructor? Bubbles? Okay. All right. I'm in. Yeah. Um, they showed a trailer for Riverdale, and uh-huh. in the trailer, I can't remember which season it was, but um, which one's... It, Betty's the blonde, right? And then yeah. Veronica's... Yeah. So there's a scene in it, the trailer where Betty is stripping on a stripper pole, um, <clears throat> and it happened in the show. Um, but it was in the trailer, and every almost everyone was there for the CW like superhero shows. No one was really there for Riverdale. Yeah. Um, and so this moment was like at the end of the trailer, and then the trailer ended, and it was like weirdly silent in the room because no one knew what to say. And then someone in like the fourth row just yelled, "Isn't she in high school?" And yes. everyone broke out laughing, and you could tell like the people on stage were a little uncomfortable because they were like. Uh, that's Riverdale. Can we get a round of applause for that trailer? <laughs> and everyone was no, like... No, you can't. Why is... Why does your show... I mean, I get that the actress isn't under 18, but the character is. Like, w- no. You... Yeah. No. We're so here to watch like, Arrow. There's also some, like, sexy bathing <clears throat> scenes. <clears throat> bathing it's scenes? In, like, a pool. It's a pool. It's not, like, a bathtub. But it's... <clears throat> it, uh, Riverdale is so cringe. Is that the... Is that the there's a there's a scene I, I I haven't seen it so I don't know but I've heard that there's a scene where there's like a hot tub and they like yeah. handcuff a dude in a hot tub yeah and then they like start turning up the heat on him in more ways than one no 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 but they literally <laughs> are like try, they're like literally like boiling it's, him yeah it's, it's 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 don't get me started about dark Betty yeah Betty goes all like ooh I'm edgy and it's really uncomfortable well it was uncomfortable they call her dark Betty it's a face. It's a legit phase. Oh, it's a phase. It's not. I, I thought it was like no, an no, alternate no. human. No, 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 no. No, you are thinking like superhero CW. This is like cringe real life CW. I just. I will never. I will never forget being in a room full of. Let's be honest. It's Comic Con. Seventy five percent men over the age of eighteen. Right. Yeah. Not Riverdale's target demographic. No. Who are all there? We all showed up to watch trailers for the Flash show, the Arrow show, the Legends of Tomorrow show, Supergirl. Like we are there for a certain thing, and you start with. I think they started with Riverdale to get it out of the way, but they started with the Riverdale trailer, and I just I I will remember sitting in that crowd of like two thousand five hundred people being like, "That's a child." Yeah. Like, you just showed us a child in lingerie. Here's what is wrong with you? Here's the thing. I'm glad that that was the reaction. Yeah, it was weird. It was uncomfortable. You know, I'm glad that there wasn't, like, a group of people that were like, yeah, you know. That I, think that, I think that those people, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I think a lot of people liked seeing that actress in lingerie. I don't think that oh, was I'm my, sure. The, the reaction was mostly uncomfortable because nobody wanted that. Yeah. We were all there for the the superhero shows. But, like, yeah. I, yeah, I do, I do, that guy just yelling, isn't she in high school? That would have been me. me up. That would have been me. I'd be like, she's 15. Yeah. Like. Oof. Oof, Riverdale. I, yeah, I get that you a have one. a bunch of hot 20-somethings in your show, but they are in high school. Yeah. Stop showing actors who are over 18 naked Put them in college. when the character's underage. I hate it so much. Put them in college. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina does it too in the first episode. I don't want to see Sabrina's butt when you tell her me that she's almost 16. Almost yeah. 16. Like you yeah. literally, the whole episode is about the fact that she's almost 16 and then immediately she gets out of a bathtub naked. And I'm like, I don't... I don't want to see this. You're like, should, am I going to jail now? If like, she's 18, fine. I want to see it. If she's 17 and three quarters, don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Even if the actress is 40, which some of these CW actors look like they are. 
Wow. It's, what? Sometimes in these scenes, you're Shots like, fired. that is like a 35-year-old man. Oh, my God. It's like when they put, um, um, like, Cory Monteith in Glee, and he's like 32. And you're like... Oh. He's so old. Yeah. He's... Rest in peace. And look, we, we've met him. Yeah. Uh, we, we performed with him. He's, he's um, like, he was an absolute, like, gem of a person. But wonderful human. Him. Wonderful, wonderful human. Yeah, or like Greece. All the children in Greece look like they're almost The 30. difference is Greece was made in, like, the 70s, and, like, I'm glad there weren't kids in that, because child labor laws were a bit more lax back then, and those kids would have been taken advantage of. Yeah. Like, at least, but, like, nowadays, I don't know. <laughs> We, we just, we do better now, and it's so noticeable when you go from something like, um, like, Stranger Things, which I think has cast people who look like kids so well yeah. as kids, yeah. and then you watch, like, Superman and Lois, and, like, even, like, in Superman and Lois, the, the children in that show They're supposed to be 14. Like kids. They're supposed to be 14, yeah. and they do not look 14 And they're played by 19-year-olds, and, like, they're, they're 19, they're, they're, and the, um, the kid who plays Jordan is only 17, and he's a very talented actor for 17. Yeah, but he does not look 17. But he does not look 17. He looks yeah, older. Yeah, it's wild. Um, Although, you know what? I gotta say, 14. I think that a hairspray actually did it. I, those kids looked like they could be, like, Zac Efron? 17. Did, no, no. With Zac the, Efron looked... How, 32 years old. No, no, no. The way that they did the makeup. He's great. He's great as Link. But Zac Efron looks the same age as Corny Collins. Zac Efron and James Marsden look like they could be brothers in that movie in a way that I'm like, this is confusing. I don't think so. I think that he looks very baby-faced in that movie. Like, they uh, made, like... I I don't know. I don't know. Like, like that Zac Efron to me I think for me, he looks so much older than High School the Musical. And that's why, like, he looks so much older than High School Musical, Zac Efron. Did you say High School the Musical? I did say High School Musical. The Musical. <laughs> that's, okay, that's, that's fair. That high school student is having a midlife crisis. Truly. <laughs> that's, yeah. that is High School on TV, yeah. 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 That's funny. Yeah. Just, just start putting people in college, guys. Mm-hmm. Like, that just solves your problem. There's just mm-hmm. as much drama in college as they're in in high school. Like... Yeah, and, like, watching, like, college students hook up, great. Yeah. I love it. Go for it. Um, I know you're of age. I know like, you're of age. That's the thing. I'm, like... And, look, I... Look, I, I've heard the argument by some people who shouldn't be making the argument, but I've heard the argument that, like, there isn't a huge, like, physical difference between, like, a 16-year-old and a 20-year-old. And, like, I get that. But at the same time, as a 28-year-old, I don't want to see a 16-year-old naked. I don't. I don't even really want to see a 20-year-old naked, to be honest. Like, the the youngest I really want to see naked is, like, uh, someone who has a college degree. Like, 22 on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Not specific. You don't have to have a college degree. But I like, don't want to, like, education chain people. But, like, 20, it, like 22 is, like, kind of my, my low side now. Yeah. 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 That's you know? fair. It, yeah, it's such a weird... If you don't pay your own rent, I don't know how interested in you I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm glad that you clarified that because Richard Sim just said you must be... You must be this educated to be naked. Can you imagine? It's like a nude beach, but you have to have a college degree to go to it. It's just a bunch of people sitting around reading books on a nude beach. That would be so <clears> weird. <throat> Uh, your personal cutoff is drinking age, but of course that is different in Canada. 21. I mean, that makes sense. I can't be naked then? No, Rebel. No, I, it's, it's not an education thing. No. Like, it's, it's that, like, it's that, like, age of, like, maturity mm-hmm. thing. Because, like, God, there was a big difference in my maturity from 16 to 20. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, dear Lord. Half your age plus eight years would be 22, Potomcium. So that makes sense. Half your age plus eight years works for me. Mm. Half your age plus eight years is exactly my line. 22. Great. Great. I'm yeah. happy for you. There are other parameters, though. Like, like it, you, you have to be, like, at least 22. You can't live with your parents. Um, I'm just not doing that. I'm not I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just not playing that game. Hey, it's COVID times. You can't judge people. I'm married now. I don't care. These were... the I, I've been... I have been with you since COVID. So, like, I... Yeah. My rules are so different now, because... We won't talk about that on stream. Um... But, like, pre... When I was living in New York and dating, like, I wasn't going to date anyone who lived at home. Right? Yeah. I wasn't going to date anyone under, like, 22. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to date anyone who... I wasn't really interested in dating someone who, like, lived off of their parents. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Just because I was like, I, There's a maturity that comes with being independent. Well, that, you and I just and have different fair. problems. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. here, here's the other thing. There are, there are probably 19 year olds who are better. Edu- the reason I don't want to make it about education is because, um, I have a college degree, but it's in musical theater. So there are a lot of people who never went to college who are actually better educated than I am because they have like life skills. Um, and I, I don't. So I don't want to ever shame anyone else's life it's because... That's not true. You have life skills. I have, like, life skills. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, Willow, I'm not judging... Look, here's the thing. I don't want to judge how other people do things. I am not mature enough to deal well with dating someone who lives at home, is what I'm saying. It, 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 is, it is my personality. It is not... Um, it's, it's not judgmental of how other people do things. These are my personal things because of my personal quirks, is what I'm saying. Quirks. How other people do things, how other people do things. I'm never going to tell yeah. people what's right or wrong in their own life. I don't care. That's fair. Well, there's a few things. There's a few things. Don't be a dick. Yeah. Don't be a dick. Don't be a pedophile. Don't be... Like, there, there's a, there is a list of things that I would say, like, don't do. Yeah. But other than those, live your life. Yeah. Uh, do you guys even know how to have a relationship without COVID? Um, I mean, neither of us have ever had COVID, so, um, I would say, yeah, we're pretty good. <laughs> no, we don't. Wow. But if we can survive this, we can survive wow. anything, Dark Dispatch. I'm not worried. Uh, I never got to where I can take care of myself fully because I got seriously sick seven years ago. Yeah, models, I totally understand that. That's, and see, that's not, like, on you, right? Like, that's... That, I, that is like a totally understandable life thing that just happens to people, right? I have just, because of the lifestyle that I was living with, the, that I was leading, I would not have been a good partner for someone in your position because I was on the road all the time. Mm-hmm. I, like I had to date people who were like emotionally independent because I was not there for them. And I was a bad partner. Like, I've dated people in different positions. I was a bad partner. No, but, like, seriously, I was, I had to acknowledge that I had to date certain kinds of people who could emotionally handle the fact that I would be like, all right, I'm going to be in Colorado for the next three months. Yeah. And then I'm going to be in Japan for the four months after that. And so, I, like, who you can date when you had the kind of lifestyle that I had is, is, is different than dating if you're, like, more settled and more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Because I would have to, like, be honest with people on, like, first dates and be like, hi, yeah, I really like you. You're really cute. Um, I'm leaving for the next three weeks, uh, and then I'll be back for two weeks, and then I'm gone for three months, and then I'm back for a few weeks, and then I'm gone for four months. You know what I mean? And, like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, and then I'm on the road for, you know, I, I'm doing a tour, so I'm going to be on the road in a van for six months. I might have Wi-Fi at night. I might not. Depends yeah. on what hotel we end up in. If I'm in a Super 8, I'm not going to be able to FaceTime you. That's just life. And so, like, I, my dating was really about um, the lifestyle I was leading rather than, like, my attraction to people. And I think yeah. that's probably why a lot of my relationships failed. Because um, I was like, I'm too busy for this. I'm so sorry. I mean, like, that's fair, though. Like, the, it's it's better, like, being honest with people right away. Being like, look, this is this is the, the life that I'm leading. Mm-hmm. Um, if this isn't going to work, mm-hmm. you know, let's not try and, like, force <clears throat> it only to be upset with each other in a few months, you know? Yeah. 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 It's tough. It being a, dating as an actor is really hard. Was yeah. the van down, van down by the river? I fucking I miss him so much. <laughs> oh, God. R.I.P., my dude. That's one of the greatest comedy sketches of all time, and it's it's so sad that uh, he passed away so young. Um, it's a long story for sure. I'm just glad to be here, and then I'm getting better. Models, you know how much we love you. We know how much you're, we're glad you're yeah. here. We adore you, dude. Also, you and I need to play Vermintide soon. We need to we need to find that out. All right, y'all. I think the show's over. I think we've kind of like we're just kind of chatting. We got now. a little off. We got yeah. a little. Off. I'm it, so sorry. It's the morning show. We got off topic. What news stories did we miss? Let's just bang them out really quick. Um, the Batman, uh, the the uh, Matt Reeves Batman movie has wrapped. So that happened. Um, Immortals Phoenix Rising's uh, second DLC, Myths of the Eastern Realm, is coming on March 25th. Oh, nice. um, which is interesting because it's an entirely different game. Um, uh, set in a different world um, that's um, Asian God-inspired instead of Greek God-inspired. Um, oh. With a different main character. So it's like a whole new game. Then there's going to be a third DLC that's a top-down game that is a completely different game as well. Set in the same world as the original game. 
but with a different main character. So, Immortals, uh, I don't know what you're doing. I don't doing. know what you're doing, but... Um, people who tried to watch Tom and Jerry uh, earlier in the week saw Justice League, the center cut instead, because that By was an accident. accident. And um, Benedict Cumberbatch doesn't want to be Thrawn because he doesn't want to be painted blue every day of shooting, which I get. Um, people yeah. would love for Benedict Cumberbatch to be Thrawn, but he was like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, I have children and I want to spend time with them and I don't want to be in a makeup chair for like four hours a day. Yeah, it's a lot of yeah. time. And then taking it off, like, bleh. So there you go. That is, uh, that is all of the, that, the that's the, 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 the quick bits at the end of the news here. Um, y'all, if you watch this on our YouTube, like and subscribe, ring the notification bell so you never miss a video, and, uh, come join us live on Twitch. We stream this every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern, the nightly morning show at twitch.tv slash nerdynightly, where I also play video games. I'm currently doing a nerdy lock, playing through every single Pokemon game in release order. That's 35 games. We had a huge setback on Sunday, um, where I lost five hours of gameplay because my game froze and I hadn't saved. So... So sorry. Don't cry for me, Argentina. But we are going to get out of here. But first, plug yourself. Uh, just, you can find me at twitch.tv slash mm -hmm. Like I said, today's stream uh, is moved to tomorrow. So we're going to be playing some Pokemon Emerald. Um, but just really quick, um, I do want to say, if you guys haven't seen um, David play Pokemon Green yet, it's hilarious. Oh, yeah, It's yeah. a bad <clears throat> translation of Pokemon Green, so you really, really should make sure that you catch it this week sometime, because it's hilarious. I, I, I don't think this is the last time I'm going to play Pokemon Green. I think I'm going to play some, like, Pokemon challenges in this Pokemon Green, just because uh, it's very funny. And I will be saving more from now on so that this doesn't happen again, because we do have to go all the way back to Brock. Yeah. Um, and Richard Sim 7 is our uh, Ivysaur. Uh, oh. So, yeah, Richard Sim 7 is our starter, which is fun. I love it. Uh, the Vietnamese translation of Crystal is hilarious. I might play that one next. That would be fun. Instead of playing Crystal, I might, because I'll, I'll do gold, silver, and then I might do the Vietnamese translation of Crystal. Oh, jeez. All right. I might try and find bad, uh, one bad translation each generation of the Nerdy Lock just for fun. Great. I love it. Y'all, thank you so much for another incredible nightly morning show. If you're listening to our podcast feed, give that a five-star rating because it helps us so much. It costs you nothing. Uh, and as always, thank you to our patrons. Yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash Nerdy Nightly. Everyone who supports us over there keeps the wheels on this bus. Uh, and the kids get to school on time because of you. As That's we always true. say, my name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarus. Do something nerdy tonight. <laughs> Bye. Bye.